Good afternoon, folks. And it looks like anytime I head on over to Gizmodo or there's an io9 article, it just makes me smile. There's something about these posts that just, they crack me up. Even from the title alone, if you just make a cursory glance and think, huh, that's, that's a weird title. The mediocrity of Batwoon also feels like one of its biggest strengths. It's like, wait a second. How can something be mediocre and have a strength? Well, I guess if you want to be practical and start measuring something on some kind of metric that you consider a critical eye would have, or your own understanding of TV, that you can have a mediocre show that has highs and lows, and I don't know in what capacity Batwoman does. Now, some people did get a chance to see the pilot for Batwoman, and Alex Kranz, which is a lady, uh, has a certain opinion about representation and inclusivity and feminism and all that good stuff, or to them, good stuff. So naturally, she's going to be a bit biased in that regard. And in this case, she actually finds the show mediocre, which is not what you want for a test case. But in most cases for TV shows, for TV pilots, every show is going to be a little rough. It's going to be a little hard to get the feel, the vibe, the, the, the actual look and the point. And that's what you do after your pilot. You sort of refine it to make it sure you know who you're making this for and how everyone looks and acts and all that that image and attitude that it should have, a show should eventually have. So it's naturally going to be rough. And that's kind of okay, especially when you're talking about Batwoman, because Batwoman starts off, she's not too sure about the look that Batwoman should have or the, the skills she would employ in fighting crime. So that could work to its, to its benefit. I don't know. We haven't seen this, but this person has. So they already think, yeah, you know, it's, it's great, but it's actually really mediocre. So I'm kind of curious what she has to actually say and at what point she admired it and, dis and disliked parts of it. So this is the first solo superhero series centered on a queer character, which makes it vitally important, even if sometimes it gets caught up in its own mediocrity. So here we have a critic who's obviously biased towards, I don't know, women, inclusion, representation, femininity, I don't know, comic books, I hope. And she's saying, yeah, it's yeah, it's okay, it's not great. Okay, obviously she's not including spoilers, which is cool. Um, now she's saying this is not new. Having a queer superhero on TV is not new. She's not the first on the CW show. There's all these characters on Arrow, and there's one on Supergirl. And Nefessa Williams has been playing a lesbian superhero, Thunder, since the first episode of Black Lightning? I'm not sure. Anyway, all these, all these other characters have done it before. Nothing new. Not a big deal, right? Okay, that's probably why she thinks it's mediocre, because they've done it better elsewhere. Perhaps. She's the first gay superhero who is the titular character of the show, and that's splitting hairs when it comes to semantics. I'm like, oof. You never, you, you never really have to say, and that's splitting hairs when it comes to semantics. I think you can eliminate this entire... Obviously, I'm being critical of the grammar, but this that sentence just drives me nuts. And boy, it means everything when you actually actually sitting down to watch an episode. Because it's Batwoman, it means everything. And she's in her own show, and she's a lead character. It's like, okay, I guess. Whatever, whatever turns your crank. I mean, if, you're, if you like Batwoman, obviously you're going to watch this show. And if you like representation for whatever, you know, ideological spectrum you're on, you're going to watch the show, I guess. Or you're going to praise it without watching it. That's probably what's going to happen. Brooding badass returns home to brood and save people while also trying to live some kind of legacy. Yeah, it's pretty much the uh, premise of Arrow. And Arrow is, has been canceled. So I guess this is just taking its place and bringing back the mantle of the Bat or the Batman. Gotham's also finished so they have to have more Batman on TV, and this is the way you do it. So she has all of Batman's gadgets, yada, yada, yeah, yeah, yeah. Johnson, in particular, has to get through some cringy exposition. And Johnson is, Cameras Johnson, who plays Luke Fox, Lucius's son, I believe, is similarly a refreshing change of pace as the dorky protector of Batman secrets. Of course, the, the, the guy is, the, is pr producing the cringy exposition. But he does it with charm and candor. Well, isn't that nice? 
So so far, the the worst part of this of the show is is Luke Fox. Uh, her stepsister Mary Hamilton is a bit of a sunshine in the show. Uh, okay, the part earnest doctor, the bad side of town. Okay, so she probably heals up Kate Kane whenever she gets injured. I'm I'm trying to see what's bad about this show that she's describing. I don't see it yet. The whole cast is charming and watchable. Doug Ray Scott isn't obnoxious as Kate Kane's work obsessed dad, despite the script. <laughs> despite the script. He is obnoxious, despite the script. Okay, so again, Doug Ray Scott, another male. And Rachel Scarston is measured in her approach to Alice, Batwoman's personal joke. So, so far, it's the script only when it comes to the males. Okay, thanks, thanks, uh, Alex Kranz. Thanks for your opinion. So the show is mediocre so far because of the males. Gotcha. The surprise is Ruby Rose. I am usually not a fan of her acting. I found her very wooden in Orange is the New Black and Pitch Perfect 3. She might be great looking, and her Batwoman might look awfully Batwoman-y. Okay, that's not a negative. That's a positive. Yet Rose has limited range. Okay, so she's admitting that Ruby Rose is not that great an actress. When she's given emotional heavy lifts in the episode... She stumbles, but she doesn't fall. That's crucial. You're admitting she's mediocre, but she's not that mediocre. She's not horrible. And that's important. It's like, yeah, she's not great. <laughs> so we got the two males and the lead who are mediocre, at least by script-wise. But we know that Ruby Rose's acting is not good. Okay, so what's the strength of the show then? If it's not the main actor or the main character, I, geez, what do you watch the show for? She kind of reminds me of Stephen Arnell, uh, Amell in early Arrow or even Lucy Lawless in early Xena. Oh boy, you're comparing the show to Xena. All right, well, it's going to be one of those goofy shows then. Uh, actors who relied more on their looks and charisma. I would say Lucy Law Lawless was pretty charismatic as a... As, uh, Xena. I'm trying to remember the first year of Xena to compare, but uh, Lucy Lawless is amazing. So, and they're able to convey genuine emotion on screen. But both of those actors improved exponentially over the course of their course of their series, and Rose could very well do the same. Yes. Okay. So, again, as a as a pilot, I'll have to give it the benefit of the doubt because all pilots are rough. But we're talking about acting. So. This is this is number one. This is this is show number one. I, you would expect the acting to at least be okay, and everything else like the set design, the costume design, the writing, all the little details would be meh. But the acting, come on, that should have been like the, the given. Like, oh yeah, this person's a, the perfect choice because when she cranks up the charisma, yeah, like when she tries to sell her motorcycle. I don't know if you guys saw the latest uh, short clip on the CW YouTube is basically a, a motorcycle ad without telling you the brand of the motorcycle. She's, she's basically just ca caressing and, and riding her motorcycle. It's like, wow, what a, what a great actress. And does something like rescue a love interest in distress, you get why she was cast. Oh, I'm, I'm surprised she didn't uh, get pissed off about the, uh, the love interest being a female in distress. I thought... Uh, Feminists are always complaining by always having these, these strong, independent women being uh, saved by, by men. I guess it's okay when women do it, right? And you also get why it's hard to really rag on the show too much. Yeah, you can't, you can't hate the show because, you know, women, the, the, they're horrible acting or they're not so great acting. You, you can't hate them. It's just they're women. There Kate Kane is, full bat mask, breathless from an early attempt at bat womaning. What is that? Uh, again, I hate this conversion from nouns to verbs. The Krogans are Kroganing. The bat woman is bat womaning. It's like, oh. Can you have a bit more descriptors in your noodle noggin? <laughs> in your brain? In your vocabulary? To explain what she's actually doing? Obviously, spoilers notwithstanding. Holding another woman who she's clearly attracted to and finding that attraction returned. Oh, eyes lock, lips are noted, the superhero and their heroine are united and their relationship reveled in. 
for for a moment the relationship is reveled in. I mean, we've had lesbian kisses on screen before. The first being recorded from Deep Space Nine. Um, not a big deal. Not not uh, not really turning my mind here, especially when you've already agreed that the show is mediocre and the actress nearly nearly drops the ball with emotional heavy lips lifts. <laughs> It's like, okay there, Alex. Oh, this is a whole new paragraph. And it's two women. <gasps> wow. Again, we've seen this before 20 years ago. As Kate Kane makes her way through a fairly rote superhero pilot, you just keep being mindful of that fact that as average as everything is, it has never really been seen before either. We've never seen... A mediocre superhero story with lesbians. <laughs> I guess so. I guess we haven't. I guess I never will. <laughs> Queer superheroes are often part of the larger ensemble, but rarely ever the focus in la live action media. Yeah, maybe because it's not interesting and it doesn't really matter what their sexuality is and no one really cares except for people like you and you don't represent the majority of people who watch superhero stories. Just maybe. The story isn't the ensembles. It's Kate Kane's. Yeah, and she's mediocre. Why would I want to watch a mediocre show with a mediocre, actr mediocre actress? And because it's hers, it's pretty easy to overlook the silly and the mediocre. You can't overlook the mediocre when she is mediocre. You've 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 told us that already. You've you've explained that to us. I, I like what? How could you even say that? You're contradicting yourself. She stumbles. I, I think what? I don't. I, you can't overlook the faults. Okay. You take them into account. That is how you come to the conclusion that this show is mediocre. You've said it yourself. You said the acting is mediocre. The two males have mediocre lines. And Ruby Rose, as an actress, just doesn't really do it. You found her very wooden in Orange is the New Black. She's mediocre in other shows. You're admitting to this. She's mediocre in this show. But it's okay. It's easy to overlook the silly and the mediocre. No, it's not. Those are qualities of acting and script. That's part and parcel of what you're getting in this show. From a person who likes the show, who considers it mediocre and has some strengths. That's not a good selling point. With Arrow ending this fall, the CW could have been lacking in a brooding rich kid turned vigilante, but Batwoman is going to fill the, the hole left practically perfectly. Uh, mm. Was Arrow mediocre? I haven't watched it. I don't know. The bonus for people who care about such things is that instead of a straight white guy murdering his way through the city, it will feature a gay white woman punching her way through the city. Wow. What a trade-off. I can't wait to not care even less. I, for one, am totally okay with that. Of course you're okay with that. And eagerly look forward to Batman's inevitable appearance? If Batman so much as shows up in this mediocre show, guess what's going to happen? It's either going to be a, an extremely mediocre, and I mean extremely mediocre, depiction of Batman, or they're going to do him justice, and they're going to be like, oh, wow, it's Batman, the thing I actually like, who by his presence alone makes this show look like crap. You see, Batwoman is figuratively and literally riding the coattails of Batman. And that's part of her character, I guess. But you don't want to be told the show as a whole is mediocre and the main character who plays Batwoman is mediocre and, and have that be the, the pitch, have that be the pilot. You want everything to hit all the notes. You want... You want the detractors to go, you know what? Even though it wasn't my cup of tea, I have to admit, the writer knew what he was doing. The actors were very good. 
all the set design, all the set pieces, they were done very well. That's not what you're getting in this, in this review. What you're getting is a biased individual who, despite its shortcomings, still says it's mediocre and still likes it. And that's fine. If you want to say, well, it's, it's not great, but it's my cup of tea. This is what I like. I really like this kind of show because of the inclusivity and, and women power and, and lesbians kissing and whatever. Great. More power to you. You found the show you love, even though you could admit it's mediocre. I will admit to watching all of Smallville. I knew that show was trash. It was soap opera trash. But I liked it because it was Superman and I had a dramatic value. Every time Superman or Clark Kent went on the screen and saved someone's life, I thought, wow, that's beautiful. And I know it was silly, and I know it was stupid, but I'm admitting it to it. I'm admitting it was trash. And this show, I think, is going to be no different for the very small people who want lesbians fighting men twice their, their weight. So bravo there, uh, Gizmodo, io9. Alex Kranz, uh, this has always been fun reading these uh, great stories. <laughs> and come October, we can't wait to see how this mediocre pilot is going to affect people. Just, whew, it's going to be great. See you guys later.